Okay, this is uh, this chapter. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me well? Uh, yes. So please uh, advise <laughs> if anything is, goes wrong for any reason, so I will find a solution, please. Um, today is a very interesting chapter, as you said, John. Uh, this talks, ab talks about joints uh, and um, relational data, so how to manage uh, different tables, which is very important when you um, do uh, research and you want to analyze some data that most probably mm, do not come from just one table, but you might need to work around um, customizing more than one table to have uh, your data ready for, for your research. So the learning objectives for, for this chapter are recognize the families of verbs for working with rational data, use case, primary, foreign, and surrogate to identify relations within tables, use mutating joints to combine related tables, and use filtering joints to remove observation from a table. Then finally, recognize common problems with joints that may happen and uh, use set operation to combine or filter tables. Uh, there are quite a few exercises, so we might try to, to see some of them as well. So multiple tables of data are called uh, relational data. This is the first, uh, uh, the first thing. The basic idea is that relations are defined between a pair of tables and multiple tables are put in relation starting from a basic idea. From this basic idea, you usually have uh, uh, two tables that you can join together, and then uh, you can join a third table to these two, and so on. So there are three families of verbs designed to work with rational data, and these are uh, mutating joins, which add new variables to one data frame from matching observation in another, filtering joints, which filter observation from one data frame based on whether or not they match an observation in another table, and then set operations, which treat observation as if they were set elements. Um, this uh, chapter we use mainly the, uh, this package, which is New York Flights 13. And this, um, this package is made of five data sets. And we, uh, there are airlines, airports, airports, flights. If any interruption with sounds or anything, please advise. Uh, planes and weather. So we want to uh, have a, uh, a look, a uh, general look at this um, table. And we see, we try to understand what are the relations within these five tables. So we see that flights is the most important one, and it contains uh, a certain number of variables, uh, such as year, month, day, hour, flights, origin, destination, uh, the tail number, the carrier, and so on and so forth. Then we have these other four tables, that are relating with the main one, like weather uh, as this um, first columns uh, variables in common with, with flights more, and in addition to other variables, as well as our lines, uh, it's connected with carrier variable to flights and planes with the tail number and airport with this uh, variable which contains both the origins and the destination of the flights. So what are the K? The K is are very important uh, and uh, we, can, we can identify the K, we can customize K. We use K to make joints within uh, tables. So a K is exactly a variable as any other variables. So it's a colon, it's a vector that we identify as a K. It's the K that is basically the link within the two tables that we are uh, putting in relation. 
So a case a variable or can be a set of variables that uniquely identify an, ob an observation. And um, what is a relation? A relation is when a primary k, and then we see what is a primary k, and the corresponding foreign k in another table form a relation. Um, we, so as, as, as we see, uh, we, have, we, we have two types, uh, uh, mainly of k's, and then a third type, which is a customized one. So a primary k is uh, like a sort of uh, the um, uh, I, uh, ID, uh, ID of your table. So it's that variable that uniquely uh, identify an observation in, its, in, in, in the table. So each row is an observation. In this case, you identify your primary k. Uh, for example, this is our plain table. And uh, this is come from the New York uh, City uh, Flight 13 package. And uh, we select just the tail number variable. Uh, that we will see this um, uh, on R, how it works. But the tail number um, from the planes table um, is a primary k. Because uh, all the tail numbers containing the planes table are unique. So there, there is no repetition uh, inside this. Um, uh, this uh, planes and tail number variable. Uh, while a foreign k, we we uh, talk, we need to think about a foreign k from the the point of view of of our table. So we are uh, in the planes table, and uh, the foreign k for the planes table is. Um, another uh, k observation which links the planes table to another table so for example i have a flights and the tail number uh, i select the tail number uh, variable from flights and this will be a foreign k for the planes table because it's even in the the in the planes but in the in the planes table is unique so it's a primary k so this will be a foreign k in case of the flights uh, um, table so um, when we uh, it might happen that we want to link two tables it may happen that we want to set like uh, um, identification numbers for for some variables so we need to identify a primary k and it might happen it might happen that uh, in a table there is no primary case so we can customize one and this is called a surrogate k a surrogate k uh, can be made well, easily with the count function, for, for example. And um, we can, uh, for example, uh, name it ID. And it will be like the, the number of rows that will be for sure um, a primary k. Because all the observations which I identified, are identified within one row are unique. So um, the type of relation can be one to many, so one variable to many variables in another table, or many variables in one table to many variables in another table, or special cases like one to one or many to one. OK. We can see some exercises for the first um, Uh, this is the um, the flights. Maybe I need to. Okay. 
there is some chat. Any any question from uh, um, at this point? I have a, a quick question and a general question. What library is Viridis? I just saw it on your okay. list. Uh, Viridis is for colors. Uh, okay. Uh, you you usually the the most common use is on uh, scale fill or scale uh, color uh, viridis. Uh, it's for um, applying colors to a map or in in, in our case, or okay. uh, a color into a, a plot. Okay, and my other question is, um, and this is just in general, when you know any of you start a project where you have relational data. Um, do you make this type of, uh, you know, the little visualization as to what connects to what in which way? Is that how people proceed or? I, I generally don't formally make okay. that kind of a uh, view, although they are nice to have around. Um, definitely, like, some of the stuff at work, like when the database was designed, they would make that kind of uh, right. visualization. Um, they, they're super helpful when you, you know, if you're getting lost, like formally mm -hmm. taking the time to do that, um, is useful. And I can't, there is a name for them in the database world and Googling uh, that name. UML uh, diagrams, universal yes. markup. Thank you. So the, okay. the, the thing I was going to reply back, Sandra, uh, mm -hmm. as John had mentioned, no, it's not formally normally an exercise when you are uh, starting to understand the data sets of the tables that you're referring to. It is helpful mm -hmm. if you are to generate a UML diagram, if the documentation that supports the data set you're ingesting doesn't have one already, it is mm -hmm. helpful to generate one. Uh, mm -hmm. My only comment would be that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to uh, set up your one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many mm -hmm. type relationship. So when you are discovering, right, you're, you're, you're ingesting, you're kind of looking at the data set, you're doing some summarization, et cetera, uh, it is helpful to draw out this type of diagram. There's many different packages that can do this. Um, mm -hmm. Within R, I would recommend, is it... Uh, I know it's the Mermaid uh, JS library, uh, John. What is the the package that does that? It, it's a graphical thing um, that evokes I, the the Mermaid diagramming. I don't know. Um, no, okay. Diagram oh, oh, diagram R. Diagram R. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Diagram R allows you to generate those type of UML documentation. Yeah, I know. We see, um, this, we see this later uh, because there's okay. an exercise about Good. Uh, okay. about this. So, mm -hmm. and the, the book uh, uh, which provides the, the solution for the exercise mentioned uh, uh, one more package and another one that you have shown in the, uh, in another book club would be nice for making things. And so, uh, then maybe you, you may want to see it. Okay, so mm -hmm. the exercise is uh, mm, are quite a few, uh, quite interesting, so we, uh, if you have any question, please interrupt and everything. Uh, we go through the exercise for the first part. Uh, so imagine you wanted to draw uh, approximately the route each plane flies from its origin to its destination. What variables would you need? What table would you need to combine? Okay, so I, uh, I think that uh, obviously uh, the latitude and the longitude uh, would be very important, as well as the origin and the destination airports for each flight. You know? So this is the package. Uh, the things that we do, we do double columns. This is works for any package, I, I'm sure you know. Then you do tab and or the list of the content um, of the, the, the package um, uh, appear to you for, for, for selecting uh, what you want. Uh, so uh, these are the five tables inside the, the package. And we see, for example, that flights, okay. 
Okay. Uh, data modeler is the, the, the other one mentioned uh, in the um, book solutions. Okay, so this is the, um, for example, this is the flights uh, um, table. And as you see, it contains some variables. And uh, if you remind yourself uh, the, the structure of the, so the, the diagram that we just have seen, uh, it's the most important one compared to the other uh, variables. It contains almost all the, vari all the, the variables, but not everyone, or not anything, not all of them, pardon. Uh, while airports uh, has a latitude and longitude, which is not on flights, and we can see this even if we do names, no, it, it, it shows you uh, the, the name of the variables, and then you can match them with, um, if you do like semicolon, and this, for example, and you have names. Uh, it puts you both names of both variables. Uh, so you can see that latitude and longitude is not in flights. So what the, the question is, um, you want to draw the route of each plane flies from its origin to its destination. So what we miss in flights, uh, it's obviously the latitude and the longitude. We have something about uh, uh, origin and destinations, uh, the, which is something that it is uh, as well in airports, but as you see, uh, is inside this variable because uh, this this variable here is the FAA airport code so it does contain both the origins and the destinations so what we do is uh, uh, select we can for example select uh, some um, uh, just the, the variables that we need from the airport and then join this with um, inner join with flights. Uh, for example, this is the latitude and long. I name it, uh, so this is the uh, new name for the, the, the new table. Uh, so I do flights and then inner join, però inside inner join, this is something that uh, uh, I as well uh, wanted to know. I can, uh, inside this function, put a select, a put a function, a select function with the uh, table I want to link um, in, and uh, I can rename, th there are two ways, when I have a variable in the second uh, table, which um, uh, has a different name. So like fa is the same as origin or better, fa contains origins and fa contains destinations. So, uh, but this fa is not uh, named as any of the variables that I have got, I have in the in my flights table so I need to rename them and um, so it does like uh, renaming airports uh, fa variable as an origin for this is a way to do the things you can do differently um, and then renaming again airports with another in and join uh, with destination so it does twice basically okay so the first inner join is is this he select just the the columns that he wants from airports like fa lat and long 
at the same time rename them with new variables and then link with by origin to flights table. So doing this, I obtain um, a new variable with origin lat and origin long. Then to, uh, as my fa contain both origin and destination, I need to do it again. So to finally um, have this uh, complete um, table for uh, answering the question, so like drawing the root. And then we, we draw the root. We see that I cannot make it forward. So how do I do this? Uh, I take just the first hundred uh, rows because otherwise it's too heavy, and then uh, uh, make a ggplot, an attempt to draw the the destination and everything. My x variable is origin long and the y is or latitude, longitude and latitude and the same as uh, for the x end because I need the x end and the y end because I'm drawing segments into my quick map. We see that we have drawn a map with borders. Then this is the segment that uses the x, x end and the y end. This is an option that if you want to add an arrow, so and this is the unit for the dimension of the arrow. But you cannot, you can even not uh, add it, and it will work as well. And then chord, quick map. This is very nice, very quick map for you to see what are the destinations from New York City flights to all the other destinations. Um, okay, so this is the first. Any any questions about this exercise? Um, Frederick, I had a question prior to. So when you were selecting um, the flights names and then airports and you had like a semicolon, is that just to divide the two relational tables so that you can just put it into one call? Um, if you scroll up, like, let me see. Yeah, right there. Uh, this is um, a, a feature provided for any, all the pa any package. The right. semicolon, the, she meant. The semicolon, yeah. And the, the semicolon just means basically run two commands on the same line. Uh, ah, sorry, okay. sorry. I got confused. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is. A, okay, the, semi perfect. The, semi the semicolons lets you to see everything in uh, both in the. Uh, now, maybe it's, it looks a bit confusing, if, but yeah. if you do like, you can do like dimension of flights. For example, mm -hmm. it's very useful sometimes because you want to see the things uh, together to, to make a comparison. And then you say like dim airports. Mm -hmm. If you run this, uh, it releases the result uh, together. So Got can, it. Okay. That, that, that's sometimes very useful. Yeah, whereas yeah. If, you, if you did it without the semicolon, if you just did it on two rows, it like puts them in separate blocks would be the yeah. only difference. Okay. Okay. That's really useful. Okay, let's see the the, the second exercise which I for, um I forgot to draw the relationship between weather and airport. This was in the original uh, picture, no? This is this was the original picture. Maybe this is a bit uh, too big. But uh, um, 
uh, to add this relationship between weather the, the table weather and I port what what um, how can I link this to the two tables the table airports has this uh, fa which is the code for the origin and destinations while weather has just the origins basically uh, airports contains weather origins so uh, this is the link within these two tables is that clear maybe not yes it's clear okay uh, exercise three say whether uh, the table weather only contains information for the origin of the airport. If it, in case it contained uh, uh, like re other record for all re airports in the US, what additional relation would it define with flights? So whether contains only origin, doesn't contain any destinations. So in case destination will be uh, identified as a foreign case in an, to another table if weather contained other records for all the airport in the USA okay like weather contains only origins it doesn't contain destinations it, it, so the origins is new york just new york not any others no if it contained other records for all the other airports in the usa it will also be containing the destinations is that right yes um, yeah. So, uh, as weather as just the origins and not the destination, it contains just the New York City airport. If it had all other all the other airports, it would have contained the destinations as well. So, in that case, uh, we will uh, in in uh, the condition of talking about primary case and foreign case, and then we will see what are they. Uh, the, the other exercise is we know that some days of the year is, are special. So this exercise asks you to make a, um, a table of special days and then you might want to add this table with a um, join function to your um, to one of the table like flights on everything. To, to have special days for identify this with flights delay or number of flights on that days and everything. So the, this, um, the way to answer this question is to make a triple uh, with a special uh, sign and uh, make it this, uh, this way. This way you uh, have this table that you can then join to other tables and it will spread out adapting to to the length of the other table and then we'll see this as well so we go there back we go. what was that triple again i know we covered this yeah the triple is um, a third um, type of table we have data frame it's we, we have tables yes uh, it's just it's a it's a way to make tibbles. It doesn't actually make a different type of data. Oh, okay. It's just a function that instead of doing it by column, you do it by row. So, okay. Um, so you you specify all the column names at the top. That's what the till days are doing, and then each row is a new row of data. Got it. Okay. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Okay. So the case, we have seen the frame <laughs> case and the primary case and everything. Uh, so the mutating joints, uh, there, there will be more exercises for case. Uh, maybe it will be the case to see them later. Then now we want to uh, focus on uh, the uh, what means apply uh, in uh, uh, a, a joint function. What are what the joints uh, uh, actually do? Uh, so, as you can see, to combine variables, uh, we can use this, this function. And the inner join function is the, the one that, let's say, that is most, most commonly used. But we, we have other three uh, type of function of, the, of this kind that are called outer joints. And they are left join, right join, and full join. I really like this picture because it really makes you understand what's happening. So this is the inner join function. And what, what does it do? This is the X table. This is the Y table. The inner join grabs just the common uh, elements within the two tables. Then uh, the left join uh, the, the the table on the left, so the one that you start with, so you start with X, then uh, pipe it, left join, and then Y. So uh, it takes consideration of the number of rows and the elements from X, so keeps all of, all of the observation in X. And then if there's more observation in Y, just discard it. Uh, the opposite, the exactly opposite, is right join. So in, in, in our case, we'll take all the observation in Y. So let's say that Y has more rows. So that the new table will be the number of rows of Y. And then the full join takes everything. And uh, in case uh, uh, add na values uh, while that missing uh, matching thing. So let's see that, for example, we, ha um, we have two tables. One, uh, this is the ID colon. You can imagine and this is the, like the, the row numbers for the X table. And these are the observations. Then the Y table um, has a similar um, column, which is not the identity. So they are not row numbers because you see it's one, two, and then jump to four. So there is no sequence. So this is a column, a variable column, most probably is not an identity. They are missing observations. So what's happened when you apply an inner join or uh, right, left, full join in these conditions? For example, my flight um, table I, um, how can I can say very, very very heavy takes long time to my connection is unstable. Um, I select. Yes. Yeah, you're good now. Go ahead. <laughs> you're unfrozen now. Okay. Okay. I select just the origin, the year, the a month, and then inner join. The inner join uh, of the weather table. But I don't want the entire table from weather. I want just these variables. So I apply the select function to weather table and, and take just these three variables from weather and then link the two tables by origin with the double quote. 
okay so this is the result and I have origin year origin year month origin is in weather as well so that would be exactly the same and then also temp a, a wind direction so what happened what is happening is that uh, uh, R with the function has taken the first two observation and discarded the the ones that do not match. So I don't have I, I don't have three in the second table. I do not have four in the first table. So he discarded. And this is the inner join function. Is that clear? Have you got any question? Can you hear me? Yes, yep. no questions. Okay. Uh, okay, then um, let's see the other f uh, three uh, outer joints functions, which are a left join, right join, a full join. Visual visualize them. Uh, left join, as I said, keeps all the observation in X. So I have one, two, three. My new table will have one, two, three. But Y missed the number three and also had four. So it doesn't care about the four because we don't have it in the first uh, table. And just add now at the same level of the third observation of X. Exactly the opposite does right join, which uh, in this case takes consideration of the second table. So you link it X, right join Y, and R takes the, the columns from I, from Y. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, adding NAV values in case of missing uh, match in the X. Uh, column uh, uh, values of the X table while the full uh, takes everything so the third row the fourth row and adding NAS where they miss where they do not match okay any questions I, I just wanted to say that almost always um I, I don't use write joins. I just write it, you know, just change the way that you're writing it to, to consistently use left joins. It doesn't really matter, but it it helps avoid the oops, the table was in the wrong order kind of mistake if you're if you're consistent about it. It doesn't and sometimes it's easier to use a write join, but almost always you can just kind of use logic to always use one type of or not one type, but left joins out of left and right. Full joins do come in sometimes, and that's a different thing, but because um, right joins are basically just a left join that you do backwards. <laughs> so. yeah. Yes, right. You you can just switch the, the table. Right. And, uh, and always uh, sometimes, or, like, or... in a long pipe, it might make sense to do a right join, but usually I end up you know, just structuring things to do the left join so you don't have to worry about the confusion. John, sorry, what's the confusion? Oh, just that um, you could kind of swap which table is first and, and, you know, forget which one that you're going to keep all of, basically. I just, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, the table that I started with is the one that I want to keep all of. And, okay. you know, the, the new table is the one that I only want to add what's relevant. And so right, I just right. always, so then, yeah, you're just always adding on to your original table if you use left joints. That makes okay. Okay. Um, Same thing, you can do it with mutate. So instead of using uh, inner join, full join, right, left join, you can use mutate. Uh, it's a bit uh, mutate and match. But it, this doesn't always work well, so... Uh, so it, it, it's nice to use if you have a small table then you can uh, verify if it's all good um, but you can do the same thing uh, this way with mutate 
and then uh, match. Okay, um, I jump this because then we, we will see this on the exercises. Uh, one uh, um, little issue to, to take consideration of are duplicated case. In case you have a table which has, for example, you have two different observations, but they have uh, the same value on another variable in your table. Like, I don't know, uh, two different things happened on the same day. So this is considered as a duplicate. And when you do uh, a join, this duplicate will be added and uh, duplicated uh, um, like there will be an expansion of the other table to reach the the same thing. When both uh, of the variable or of the tables have duplicates, then uh, there will be a double duplication. So we have double days, uh, uh, I mean same, same days uh, in double observation in the second table. So this will lead to duplicating variables in uh, the first table as well. So also having this, the first thing here, you have other two which are um, coming from the second table, the duplication of the second table. And we will see this in the exercises. So when- I just wanted to say yeah. on the duplication, like, that is a very common source of like, you know, you'll be working with some data, you naively think that everything's not duplicated and then you do a join and all of a sudden you have like, you know, and uh, several orders of magnitude larger table. It's like, what, what, <laughs> you know, and that is generally from there being duplicates in both tables. And so it just blows up, you know, you can have like a hundred to a hundred match and then your tables just grow by, um, several orders of magnitude. So that uh, is something to watch out for. And he talks about that with the key stuff of like, you know, checking that the keys are actually unique because that is surprising a lot of times. Exactly. So by default, the, the biting uh, that you add uh, inside the inner uh, function uh, is uh, by null. <clears throat> So you can uh, uh, just do not specify anything and it will be a natural join. But if you want to make like a special table exactly the way you want it, you want to select some columns from a table and it's very important that you link all the variables in the new table, in the table that you want to link to your, to the, to the, 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 the first table, because otherwise uh, uh, it duplicates the rows, the, the columns, the variables, adding uh, dot y, dot x, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's important to link by a, a variable or by a certain number of variables that are common within the, the two tables. If they are common, but they have different names, you can just rename them this way. This is the new name of the B colon in the second table. Uh, we see this in the exercises. Okay. It doesn't sustain opening uh, the things. Okay, so this is the
Okay. Okay. Uh, if I uh, this is what I did it. Okay. The primary case. How do I identify a primary key? To identify primary key, I use the function count. Once I identify the, the, the primary key, I can say, for example, uh, that flights uh, table hasn't got any primary case. So say if I do count um, some ob observation that I suppose they should be unique, uh, I can see that, for example, if I do count, uh, um, I don't know, what, what would be uh, unique, like the tail number, that would be a unique variable. If I do this, I see that uh, I have a certain frequencies, a certain number of frequencies that belongs to the same uh, tail number. So I suppose that flights hasn't got any ID colon identity K that, that would be uh, a primary K for this table. So if I compare this to uh, an, a, um, a different table, I may be able to find a primary K. So what I do, uh, First thing, I arrange the, the variables and then create an ID with the row numbers. So if I do this, you see that uh, we have the fly ID and this is a primary key for the flights table. So all the observations are unique within the table. A shorter way to do this is to row names to column and then name the variable and you obtain the same thing and it also place it on the first place um, exercise say identify the case in the following data set maybe you want to and you will want to do this For example, in the batting, this is a new, and uh, these are a list of packages that you may, uh, they are interesting. Inside, there are some uh, data set. This is Laman, Baby Names, uh, NASA Weather, Fuel Economy, ggplot2, which contains diamonds. So we are uh, seeing this from, from these packages. Uh, for example, this, this um, table which is this, and as some variables, and as a player ID, for example. No? So we want to see if player ID is a primary key. What do we do? We do count player ID, and then we, we see that there are some other uh, ID things. Uh, so we add also uh, year ID and this other variable, and then we see greater than one, because we want the count thing really is a table which the frequent with, with the frequency and as you see the frequency is one so th this is an option that you can do to release uh, zero or more than 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 that to see that if you have primary case with three with these three variables or not so they are all unique observations so the book does more with all the other um, uh, packages that are suggested. Um, one interesting thing is with diamonds. So it doesn't find um, one primary key. In fact, the number of rows are slightly um greater than that uh, that's just yeah. pausing on that for a sec that's i i'm surprised by that 
like that means that there are duplicate rows in the diamonds data set. Why? Why do they do that? <laughs> the, the diamond the data set, uh, because he hasn't selected some uh, uh, particular colors, but it doesn't contain, um, for example, if I do uh, count and select like, uh, what would be a primary key for, for this thing? Um, Cut color clarity, I think. Oh, no. uh, I guess. Well, no, I guess. Uh, for example, let's, let's yeah. just see this. And we see that we have some frequency, which is greater than one. Well, but the thing that's surprising me is that distinct means that there are rows that the entire row is duplicated. Um, it, you know, or distinct wouldn't change anything because distinct is basically saying if I count every column as the primary key, I still will get some that have more than one. But that um, and it's, yeah. so it's, it, it, it's surprising to me. It means that they have some duplicate data in the data set that they include in the package. No, that means that, uh, for example, if you, for example, you, if you see cut as very good, very good, double twice here. Yeah. And but uh, here you have I, uh, E, E, E. So it means that, because these are um, distinct means uh, that, uh, all the rows are completely different, which is not. Right. Uh, um, but it, because you're not naming any arguments too distinct, it means I want rows where, uh, where everything, you know, like actually, so just take, take the arguments. No, that won't work. It, but it's saying that every value in some of the rows is the same as another row. Let's see. Let's see if I do diamonds, names, and which is this? I say names, Here, let me. Do, 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 names. And then I say count um, diamonds. So. Uh, Distinct. Uh, I would need to to write all the things distinct here. Yep. So run that, and it'll show you that there are some rows that are exactly identical all the way across. Ah, okay. And I don't know why they do that. <laughs> <laughs> like the price is identical, the like everything. Um. Anyway, sorry to go off on a sidetrack, okay. but yeah, no, maybe maybe the difference between these two numbers is the are the number of rows which are replicating. Uh, because these are the dis the number of distinct rows. Right. And so this and would be a case. Number of rows. Yeah, this is this would be a case where if you had another table that like defines what the colors mean, like maybe expands the colors out into the full name. Um, and you tried to join, you've got duplicates in the initial one, and so it's gonna make some duplicate data um when you expand out and so this you know that's something to look out for i like a lot of times if there is a chance that something is fishy with my data i will just throw a distinct in there to get rid of duplicate rows and i, I wouldn't think to do that with the diamonds data set because i would have thought they had already done that so it's interesting can i just ask a question to clarify yeah so i guess uh they are not so each observation each row is not distinct based on those whatever six variables right based well um, and it, yeah which is all of the variables in the table so in it the means table, that, right mm -hmm. and you're surprised that that is the case because you think that so is it something where if you had an individual diamond marked with an individual id that there shouldn't be like that would be a distinguishing thing 
whereas the rest, like, right. you know, the feature would be similar. So I thought that the diamonds data set was a table of distinct diamonds. Each row diamond. is a diamond. diamond. Yeah. yeah. Um, it says, yeah, the prices and other attributes of almost 54,000 diamonds. But I mean, technically, I guess it could be that there were two diamonds that are exactly identical and had the same price. But that, that doesn't that would seem... not surprise me. Um, because maybe if they had, um, I mean, I don't know what else could distinguish it, but from what I'm reading on the, on the names, it doesn't seem, it, it would make sense that two different diamonds could have those characters, but you know, I'm not a diamond expert, so. Yeah, I, I don't know how many digits you would need to go to on XYZ right. to get right. to That's unique, but it seems like these should be unique. I see. Like it's exactly, exact measurements of individual diamonds um oh so any i'm sorry to totally derail everything but it's that surprises me that their data set has duplicate rows like that it's got to be used in examples somewhere there must be a reason they keep the duplicates mm. <laughs> i mean i guess it's used as an example right here so <laughs> exactly maybe, yeah maybe um, okay, so now now we see what the mutating joint uh, do. Uh, uh, for example, if I have the flights and select some, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, it is uh, after one now. So just try to find a stopping point and we will, I, I think actually this is probably a, a good stopping point and we can continue this chapter next week. Okay. If that works for everybody. Um, so we are in the mutating joins exercises, um, and we won't get distracted by uh, the key columns of the diamonds data set <laughs> next week. Um, so yeah, that that's great. Like I said, this is a really super, super important chapter. Like for most anything you ever do, you'll need data from one place and data from another place that you're combining together. And that's what this is all about. So. Um, yeah, looking forward to the next, you know, the next uh, half. Yes, thank you so much, Federica. Thank you. Thank you.